Hello guys, welcome back. We are going to rehouse our Samuel Pais Aminia, the Venezuelan Sun Tiger. Now this is a really, really popular spider in the hobby and um, it's a new world arboreal as as we saw with the, uh, the Trinidad Chevron, they are related. So what we're going to do, we're going to move this girl out of here because she's looking really old and tired in this enclosure and we're going to move her over and we're going to put her into one of our bioactive systems so it's the same as we done for our chevron got our matting in there our potting compost straight into this now then we've got got our beastie subs little, little, our beastie substrate here which we collect this is just our uh, our regular uh, leaf mulch and everything else and as you can see in here we've got all our little creepy crawlies and this is one of the things that you get from when you collect from the wild you get all your creepy crawlies now we've got springtails in here um, there's isopods in here as well, and what we can show you is what we have here as well. This is another one of my firm favourites. I love using this stuff. This is just rotten wood, and as you can see, it is it's soaking wet. And this is why the moss is doing so well on it. And as you can see in here, look at this. These are our general garden wood lice. The isopods, you can see them in there. There's one waking up in there now. There's a little baby there. They're all over the place. There we go, there's another one there. You can see these are absolutely everywhere. And as we peel it back, quite often, you'll see they'll be hiding around in here. Where are you? Oh, there they are, look. You see them coming in through there. They're just underneath the moss. But you can see from this how it's actually it's, it's very, very damp in here. And this is an ideal situation. So all your things like your springtails, your isopods, everything else, they will get in under here, which is what protects them from the spider because it's all well and good having these isopods in with your bioactive enclosures. But if they're in with very small spiders, the, the spiders will prey on them and they will eat them. So we need to get a good colony of them going first. If they're in with larger spiders, like these adult Aminias, the Cambridgei that we done earlier on, these are big spiders, and they don't tend to bother with the very, very small isopods. So they're quite safe with them. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna put our beastie material in. And we got some bark here. Now this is, I'm not actually entirely sure. I think I think this is off of a birch. I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. I'm going to give you a little tip here. When it comes to these pieces of wood here, if you're lucky enough and you know anyone that's um, an arborist, which is a, a, a chap that deals with trees and things, or anywhere that cuts wood, got a timber yard, you can often go and get the pieces of bark when they've been cut, go and get the pieces of bark off the, what we call the rounds. Uh, and this is where a lot of these come from. This is where I get a lot of my wood. And it's literally just comes off and then I just cut it to the size I want it to do. Absolutely ideal. And it's all perfectly, perfectly natural and safe. So I think what we'll do there, we've got um, our water bowl. Put that up there like so. I'll get that in now. That is smoking hot. Look at that. It's almost on fire. We'll get that in there. Again, as you'll remember, the water neutralises the glue, which enables us to use it straight away. 
means we can put our spider in here directly. We're going to get a little bit more soil, a little bit more beastie. Up in there. Get them out of there like so. Now then, we've got a nice little plant here, and we're going to, I think we're going to use this. Um, yes, we're going to use this. We're going to plop this in here. And this is going to help with all our creepy crawlies. Everything that you've seen in that piece of wood there is straight out of the wild. And there is nothing in there that is going to harm your spider. Nothing at all. So we're going to take this plant here, just loosen the roots up a little bit. Too deep. There we go. Now the plants are doing nothing but than giving us just a little bit of decoration. That is all they're doing. And we've got some of our moss. What I'm gonna do is gonna take that away like that, offer it up. And all we do is we just flick off any of the loose debris just to keep it nice and clean. And we can place that in there like that. You'll find once the isopods and what have you become established, they will crawl underneath here and it will help them to hide away from the spider. Right so we get a little bit of water on there. And we'll just soak this down. And what we do now is when we first make these up, we actually put quite a bit of water in. And that helps all of our plants get established. And because we've got the clay balls in the bottom, it means that we can give a real liberal amount of water and it not cause any problems. If we didn't have the clay balls in there and we literally just had soil straight to the bottom of the enclosure, water in it like this would, would cause us problems because the water would have nowhere to go and it wouldn't be able to leave the substrate. So we would end up with sodden substrate. And this is what causes you an awful lot of problems. And it can give you things like mould and, and what have you. Everything that's going to be detrimental will happen because it can't dry out. The, the way we have the system here with the balls, it means that our substrate will drain through. The water will drain through it, disperse into the balls, and the substrate will dry out in effect, but not completely dry. So what it does is it literally stays damp, which is exactly what we want. That's where we want it to be. So then, that is all ready to go. I think that's rather nice. So what we're going to do now is we are going to take our sun tiger. Now you regulars would have seen this girl before. This is the one that we've bred a couple of times now. And she's right down in the bottom. She's, you can see what happens when they get behind the bark. This is what they create. And you can see now, this is all webbed up. So we can't really see in here. It's very, very difficult. It's very, very difficult to actually see. But what we can do is when we look through the top, if you come and have a peek through the top, when we get a light, we can shine a light through the bottom and we can see our spider in the bottom. And we can see what she's up to. So now what we're going to do, we are going to try and get her out. We've got our catch cup on the ready. 
These guys can move quick and they can be a little defensive. Do I want that? No. So the best way we can do this now, the easiest way, is to peel this back We are literally just going to pull the cork bark back, keeping the top. You see how well she's webbed this all up. See how they mix the the soil and the moss and bits and pieces all into the web. This gives it structure. Here she comes. There she comes. Let me just tear this away. Now you can see there, she's got a little bit of attitude about her. And this is purely because we have literally just torn her house down. So she's going to be a little bit upset. So what we think, what we aim to do now is to keep any of that aggression down to a minimum. And I'm going to try and take this bark out like this. Here we go. Now it's at this point that we stand the chance that she might just well bolt. So we've got two choices now. We can either get her in the box or we can try and transfer her over. You see how she's holding on to the web. As far as she's concerned, she's still fairly safe. And you see there, what we're doing is we're removing the parts that will actually cause us problems. Because when you're catching your spider up, the least amount of things you've got in your way, the better it is. So what we're going to do now is we can move this around. You can see she's coming out now. And we're going to pop this in the front. And with our lid, we're going to use the lid and the box so that we can catch them. And I'll try and do this so that you can see what I'm doing. There we go. We have a little tiny attack there. And at the moment, she's still hunkered down inside. So we're going to leave the lid there. And we're going to ask her to come up. Here we go. A little poke on the bum there you see and she's on her way now we've got the cricket tub underneath her and we can bring the one round to the side and here we go you see that we've walked her into the box with no trouble at all As you can see, this is a, a full grown female. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna take this off and hopefully we'll get a nice good look at her. There we go. Now you see the lovely golden chevrons. This is where they get their name, the sun tiger. And you can see now this, this girl is normally very, very black. And she's turning more to that sort of chocolatey sort of colour now. So she's probably coming up coming up to pre-malt. Now there's two options here. She's either coming into pre-malt here, or as you can see from her abdomen, she's actually quite large. So there is a possibility that she's full of eggs. Now we have paired this one, but nothing's really come of it. And it just, it just might be that things are just moving along rather slowly at the moment. So maybe this, this little rehouse will probably 
kickstart her into either producing a sack or molting out. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get her to hopefully walk up. Now sometimes when you touch them, they'll turn around to actually face whatever it is that's bothering them. Sometimes they'll walk away. We'll see how she feels today. What I'm going to do is literally just touch her toe. Now you see there, the minute I touched her toe, you saw how she, all of this lot hunkered down. You watch. See how she's tightening up? You see? This is where she doesn't really want to move. So what we're going to do is we're going to lift her very, very gently. See, now she's starting to turn towards the brush. We want her to go up. Lift it up a little bit higher. Turn the box around if that's the way she wants to go. There we go. Notice we've lost all the aggression. And this is because we've removed her from her safe place. And she's now going into a brand new place. So she's not aggressive now, she's just checking things out. And this is very, very important. That just because they're showing aggression doesn't necessarily mean that you're in danger. You just need to learn to see it for what it is and deal with it appropriately. And as you saw there, for a very flighty spider, she's actually come in, she's gone in nice and slow and nice and gentle. And this is her entire behavior. It's not because she's a special spider, it's because of the way we actually deal with her. So you saw from when we took her out of her box, she was in the security of her webbing, and this is what made her react the way she did. So we saw the feet up in the air in a threat pose, the fangs were out. She's demonstrating that you really don't want to mess with me. But we left her where she was, we removed all of the stuff that was likely to get in our way. And once we got her clear, we could then get in with our box, move her, she hunkered down. So then we get our paintbrush, we go down below her, just gently move her up, and she comes up the security of that webbing. She's still got the security of the webbing. This is the important thing. And as she comes up the webbing, we can then move the box underneath with the lid, and she was in. No trouble at all. So, oh, excuse me. So all you need to do is just relax. She's not going to kill you. She really isn't. So we just need to understand what she's doing and why she's doing it, and then we can work appropriately and get her out. And as you can see now, she's very, very relaxed. She's just having a little look through there. Not quite sure what she's doing in there, to be honest. She's actually taken a drink off the glass. That's what she's doing. <laughs> so yeah, so now we've got we've got a nice new new enclosure there. And she will web this all up like she did in her previous home. And then hopefully this move will either promote her to, to molt out or promote her to, to drop an egg sack, depending on where we are in the scheme of things. I can move that around there for you. There you go. Now these guys like a, um, a reasonably humid enclosure. We're looking at around about sort of 60 to 70 percent is, is more than enough for these. They really do. They, they like a little bit of humidity, but it doesn't need to be wet. And you would have seen in the old enclosure there, it's actually the area that she's living in is dry. So it's air humidity once again that we're looking for. Um, we can keep her like this and she will be perfectly happy. Now, food wise, again, these can be a little bit like the Chevrons, the Cambridgei. They have a very strong feeding response. So it's very easy to overfeed these. So we need to monitor how much we're giving them. Don't be tempted to keep throwing food in. Keep them at a nice steady level um, and they'll grow fine. And again, these are another one that are really relatively easy to breed. So if you want to get into your breeding, these are an ideal spider to try. They're pretty good. Well then, well, I think that pretty much co covers the Arminia. And um, yeah, they're a very popular spider. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget, 
be calm, be gentle, and love your spiders. I'll see you soon, guys.